Before you start to recone your speaker, tighten any screws that might be available. Not all speakers have them. Cover the masking tape that's covering the voice coil gap with fresh tape to trap in any dirt and debris that might be on the old tape from the cleaning process. Remove both sets of tape together. Take a piece of shim or a thick card sack and drape masking tape over it so it's sticky on both sides and insert in the voice coil gap to clean any debris or filings that might have made their way into the gap. Repeat until the tape comes clean and visually inspect to make sure you can't see anything that might still be in the gap. Put the shims in alone. Take your shim and clean off any debris that might have attached to it, put it in the gap, and evenly press the voice coil down into the gap. Dry fit all the remaining parts. If the cone throat is a little too snug around the voice coil, put it face down on the table and use the back of your thumb to just gently open it a little bit or a lot if needed. Fine. Dry fit that it fits smoothly. Remove the parts, carefully pulling out the voice coil and shim together. You should set the height of the voice coil so that there is a, almost an even amount of space on the bottom of the shim the to the windings. So set it so that the voice coil leads are pointing to the terminal. Fold them over carefully so they won't get in the way. Take a piece of shim material, wipe it clean, and insert it around the outside of the voice coil to make sure that the coil doesn't scratch on the outside so that there's enough space. Use your contact glue. Put a bead where the spider is going to go on the frame. Put the spider in place and turn it gently so that it is flat and even. You can also put another bead of glue right on top of where it meets up to the frame. For the epoxy on that? Yeah. Okay. Now you're going to epoxy the voice coil to the spider. If the cone meets the spider. You, this can be done in one step. In this case, with this JBL 127 H-1, there's a space between the spider and the cone. So the epoxy has to be done in two steps. Okay, to to Mix the epoxy separately onto a piece of cardboard or a piece of paper. And then, gently put a bead where the spider and the voice coil meet. Do this in a full 360 degree circle. Okay. Now you're ready to attach the cone. Put a bead of glue on the frame where the cone meets the frame. And then you're going to use the nozzle to smear it? Okay. What should I say instead? Use the tip of the nozzle to go back and smear it so that you have a nice flat glue area. Put your cone on. Again, make sure it's sitting at a natural position. You can move it up and down a little bit to make sure that it is sitting properly and attach the cone down. Do the same with the gaskets, a thin bead, and then use the nozzle to spread that glue out. Make sure that the lugs on the gasket line up with the holes in the frame. This speaker only has four holes, so only four of the holes on the gaskets will line up. Once you have them glued, you can tape them in place.
Next, you're going to epoxy the voice coil to the cone. Mix some fresh epoxy because the one that you had previously might get a little thick. So mix it up well and then the same process. Put it down where the cone and voice coil meet in a nice 360 degree circle. Now, if the foam is lower than the height of the gaskets, which you can see here is the case in this JBL speaker, then you can turn the speaker over and let it dry overnight.